the scene, I'm going to have to remove you myself. I'm going to be spent. What is the final game set for? 1989. Well, we had the murder of Jason that took place on the 19th of November. Just give me for one, just one, just one reason. Risk. Why my children can't come. Risk. Sorry? Risk. What risk? Risk. Risk. Oh. Emotional harm. Oh. Mr. Osu was gunned down as he drove into his home here on Beclair Drive. The two gunmen walked right up to the vehicle and fired at least five shots through the driver and passenger windows. They found no evidence linking Jason to serious organised crime. These are the people that carried out the planned multiple murders in which Jason was executed. These are the people that created the conditions which facilitated the exploitation of the mother's psychosis and the child abuse and planned multiple murders which stemmed from it. These are the people that became involved in a criminal cover-up to protect the mentally ill mother from prosecution in the planned multiple murders. These are the people that continue to deny Jason justice and attempt to smear Jason's memory and legacy. These are the people who continue to deny the mother's psychiatric help and continue with the institutionalised child abuse that Jason was executed trying to stop. This is the reason I stopped their attempt to secure life imprisonment with a recommendation of 40 years against Mr Paul Woodford. Within days of the trial commencing, Woodford dismissed his legal team and represented himself. The prosecutor Mr Unsworth told the jury, his hand may not have been on the weaponry at the time it was used, but lying in the shadows, his was an essential guiding hand in a campaign of violence that was dedicated, murderous, professional and ruthless. Mr Unsworth continued, There is no issue that there was such a conspiracy. Those behind these crimes hoped they would never be caught or scrutinised. Within days of the trial concluding, Mr Woodford cut his own throat and then told prison guards, I've had enough, I just want to get it over with. The following morning, I attended the trial unannounced. I offered to represent Mr Woodford as his legal advisor. He agreed and asked Judge Openshaw to allow me to represent him. The judge refused. I advised Mr Woodford to ask the judge to allow me to act as his layman. The judge refused the request. I advised Mr Woodford to call me to the witness box. The judge couldn't refuse that request. On entering the witness box, I issued Mr Woodford with a list of questions for him to ask me. In almost two hours of uninterrupted presentation of documented evidence, I told the jury Yes, there was a professional conspiracy. Those involved were so professional, they never actually laid their hands on the weapons. But they controlled the mind that orchestrated the planned multiple executions. I told the jury, yes, those behind these crimes never thought they would be caught due to evidence being placed before the jury. They thought they would never be scrutinized, but they were. And here I am placing evidence before you, a jury. I was secretly recording them exploiting the psychosis of my children's mother to further abuse my already suffering children in consistent repeated attempts to incite me to violently attack or even kill the mentally ill mother of my children. I informed the jury the operation was run like an organised crime group. At the head of the criminal enterprise was its ringleader Jonathan Murphy. He was the true guiding light behind a ruthless murderous campaign. Mr. Murphy authorised and allowed his lieutenants, Eddie and Joanne, and their accomplices in social services, Joan, Margaret, Michelle, Sue, Nikki, and their associates, Kat Ueri, employed by Kafkas, to conduct the exploitation of the mother's psychosis and the institutionalised child abuse and planned multiple murders which stem from it. Had they secured a conviction against Mr. Woodford, as the person they claimed orchestrated the planned multiple murders, they would have requested to their colleagues in the coroner's proceedings that there was no need for a coroner's inquest before a jury because they would have claimed they had secured convictions against the gunman and the person they intended to claim orchestrated the planned multiple murders. I informed the jury the execution of Jason was a state-engineered, state-authorised, state-allowed execution of black people. In this case the state being Jonathan Murphy and his associates. I told the judge, Mr Openshaw, the concern of the victim's family 
is that you are an employee of the state. Your mortgage, if you have one, is paid for by the state. I looked at the prosecutor, Mr. Unsworth, and told him, Mr. Unsworth, you too are an employee of the state. And if you have a mortgage, it is paid for by the state. And I assert this is a state engineered, state authorized, state allowed execution. I told the jury, the reason behind Jonathan and his associates conducting these murders is due to extreme ideologies similar to white supremacist beliefs. After leaving the witness stand, the professional dedicated prosecution team that had successfully convicted the gunman a year before told the jury to dismiss my state-sponsored executions and white supremacist ideologies as misplaced beliefs and conspiracy theories. The jury rejected the professional dedicated prosecution team claims and believed my presentation of documented evidence proved that the planned multiple murders in which Jason was executed was orchestrated by state employees using the mentally ill mother. The jury found the man police claimed orchestrated the execution of my beloved brother Jason not guilty. The not guilty verdict allows me to inform the coroner that he too is a state employee and therefore the planned multiple murders in which Jason was executed can only be decided by the people of this country before a jury and not a state employee. It is in coroner's proceedings before a jury I will once again present the documented evidence to prove that the execution of Jason was a state engineered, state authorized, state allowed execution of black people using what we suspect are known racist criminals. Sadly for the children Jason was executed trying to protect, there is no way of having a jury preside over their case. On hearing the same evidence I presented before the Woodford jury, state employee and family court judge Michelle O'Leary, entrusted to protect and safeguard children, ruled there is no evidence of the child abuse. No evidence of the mental health. And no evidence the mother orchestrated the planned multiple murders. What is the final hearing set for? Well, we had the murder of Jason that took place on the 19th of November. Emotionally and mentally, state employees have murdered two innocent children. Fortunately, in Ireland, concern is growing at government level about these state-sponsored child abuse and murder cases, which is being concealed in what they call family courts. In the public arena to date, there hasn't been a great amount of uh, information available because obviously uh, these cases are held in private and have been held in private for good reasons. But of course, um, there is a difference between privacy and secrecy. It has certainly struck me that one of the things to emerge from the discussion over the last few weeks is actually the dearth of information about what actually does happen in those courts. Not through any willful ignorance, but rather the nature of the proceedings is such that nobody can know what goes on uh, except the participants and the small little cohort of lawyers and social workers who are in each individual case.